So I'd like to welcome again um, Professor Mallard from France, from Toulouse. Um, he started off the short, ses short sessions, he's going to finish them off again. Um, and his talk is on traumatic reticuloperitonitis, correlation between necros necropsy and anti-mortem clinical and laboratory data. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Chairwoman. So now uh, a topic uh, not very exotic, but very common in our practices, uh, traumatic reticuloperitonitis, uh, I will say uh, TRP in the, to continue. Okay, the same plan as previously. You all know the problem. Left side, the reticulum. Right side, the weapon. Uh, a piece of uh, iron or uh, any metal, okay? But the real problem is that TRP is uh, a challenge for the practitioner because uh, all is TRP and nothing is TRP, as you know, okay? So the questions were interest of the um, ultrasonography in the diagnosis of TRP, interest of, uh, in association with other clinical or analytic data, and we uh, promptly uh, restrained it to uh, dosage of fibrinogen, and always the same uh, words by uh, Sebastian Bugzinski and a special promotion on the, his books, okay? Um, we wanted to know exactly uh, if uh, these trust sonography were right or wrong, and the idea was, that my first study was to, uh, to have a radiography and to see, or not to see, any iron a piece of metal in the thoracic part of the, or between the rumen and thoracic part. But with the charming breed uh, of beef, beef cattle we have in the western part of France, that's to say limousine, blonde d'Aquitaine and so charming beast, it was not possible to have um, a radiography for uh, all cases. So the second idea was to compare the ultrasonography and the results, the um, necropsic findings when the cows were euthanized. And we had to measure and to see what we really have seen. The idea, we started in the last trimester of year uh, 2014 with 33 cows with standard clinic examination, ultrasonography, blood sampling, bio biochemistry, but only uh, fibrinogen, and hematology, we dropped it uh, after three cows, so I will not deal with hematology. And to have a complete uh, cases, and we include only in 38 cows necropsy, because all cows suspected with TRP were treated with uh, a magnet, with um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, and penicillin. And some of them could go back to their farm, and the other were euthanized, the 38 remaining. Okay. The breeds, uh, no importance. The age, no importance. We tried to, to correlate and to give predictive value to uh, breed, to age. No predictive value, as you know. We used here only the MyBly 5 and uh, convex probes, uh, allowing us to see superficially, but also deeply, because in some cases, in very muscled uh, beef cattle of the uh, we face, we only uh, see the surface of the atrium of the rumen or the uh, reticulum, and we need to have a, a probe allowing us to go uh, from uh, superficie to uh, deep parts of the cattle. You know where to, to put the, the probes, okay, relating to anatomy of the cattle. We have chosen the left side. This is Guy Bataille, my student, uh, who performed the thesis. And we analyzed in the same way as the study on the umbilical disorders. We analyzed our results and we tried to measure sensitivity, sensitivity specificity, PPV and NPV. Okay, the importance with the, the, the first figures we, we faced were important and we had to choose uh, thresholds or cutoff and uh, these are the cutoffs we had and the cases uh, as they are split, okay, what we, which is the most important, this is total protein, this is fibrinogen, this is total protein and fibrinogen and this is our cutoff, the main uh, figures we used are the dosage of fibrinogen, and we, we will discuss in a few minutes uh, this cut all these thresholds, okay? 
no no words on hematology because we stopped with uh, three uh, or two uh, three to four cows. A few examples of the the image and the structure at necropsy. Here an alteration of the surface of the serose, and here the result the same cow at necropsy of course. Here an abscess and the result at necropsy. Here are adherences and a lot of fibrin and the result at necropsy and so on, a collection of fluids and inflammatory lesions and the results at necropsy in the same cow, okay? So, clinical data are decorated with uh, the diagnosis, the accurate di diagnosis of uh, TRP. In fact, not, we tried all combos. The unique combos predictive really to TRP is the combo of the seven clinical signs you have in the first lines, and as you have, uh, you can guess, no cow had all the seven sides, okay? So let's go back to the topic of the study, ultrasonography alone, and the ultrasonography was performed before anyone could know the result of biochemistry or other paraclinical uh, data. So sensitivity and specificity positive predictive value, negative predictive value, they seem very poor, uh, and we'll discuss why uh, later, uh, except sensitivity. But the all data were due in part uh, because the they were euthanized on average two to three weeks after ultrasonography and diagnosis, that's to say two to three weeks after treatment. And I suppose that uh, the results at necropsy were uh, changed by this treatment and the delay between the diagnosis and the, euthanize, the, 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 the time they were euthanized. If you add biochemistry on the sole uh, results of fibrinogen with a cutoff at about seven grams per liter, you dramatically increase the performances and which is important, the negative predictive value, which is one, that's to say the probability to have a real negative uh, TRP when ultrasonography and biochemistry say no, is 100%. Okay? Hematology, I would say, we stopped after three cows. So the results, if you want to synthesize them, are here. We do recommend by now, due to these performances, to add biochemistry systematically to ultrasonography. Why could it be better? We have multi-biases of recruitment. That's to say we don't know when a cow is hospitalized at the vet school of Toulouse, since uh, when the trouble have initiated. We don't know the always the, the treatment the cows add, and we manage them sometimes differently because we have a lot of clinicians in our hospitals and the protocol, I must confess, is not always the same from clinician to clinician. We come back to the same problem as it was evocated by Professor Koeffler, that's to say the standardization. We can discuss the choice of biochemical data. It is the next slide. We can discuss the choice of thresholds. Fibrinogen is even more um, accurate if the thresholds or the cutoff uh, is dropped from six to seven gram per liter to five to four. But we have chosen, as usual in our hospitals, six to seven. And we can discuss also the choice of necropsy as the gold standard. In the next step, we, we are going to do the same job with cilioscopy, laparoscopy, that's to say, to see all lesions in all calves, in all cows, sorry, including those who feel better <laughs> after the treatment and who go back to the farm. We, are, we don't need to kill them. I think it will be the next gold standard for us to, uh, to evaluate the the performances of ultrasonography. The choice of necropsy is always farmer dependent because a lot of cows had to be euthanized or not, and the euthanizing decision is in the hands of the farmer. 
And as I, as I always man, uh, already mentioned, there is a delay between admission, clinical and laboratory data, and euthanasia. That's to say, uh, maybe the lesions modify, and I'm sure in sometimes they modify because, on average, I told you uh, already, the, the be between the entry of the, the cow and the euthanize, the, the euthanizing decision, la, the, the time lasting is two to three weeks. Okay. I did, I discussed to one point the threshold of fibrinogen, but you can also choose other acute protein uh, of inflammation, uh, uh, and maybe the results could be different. W I didn't try, but it is also a, a next step uh, to have better sensitivity and specificity than the expected one with fibrinogen. Well, to conclude, ultrasonography and TRP in our hospitals are man is mandatory because all is TRP, nothing is TRP. After a complete clinical examination, you have a, a lot of clinical signs and it is difficult to let them communicate and to give an idea. Of course, as bovine practitioners, when we face a sporadic problem in adult cow, dealing with the abdomen, I would say, we always think in traumatic reticular peritonitis, okay? But it is necessary, mandatory to confirm it, and ultrasonography seems a good tool associated with a minimum biochemistry, a minimal biochemistry. You secure your di diagnosis in TRP because the decision in half of the cases is euthanize, uh, euthanasia, uh, at least in France. Ultrasonography is complementary to gross examination. I say gross examination and complementary. No ultrasonography before a gross examination for us as for our students. There is a risk, as you see in the figures, of overdiagnosis, and uh, the overdiagnosis is um, a trap for the ultrasonographist, I, I do believe, I, I speak of myself, is when you want to see something in black and white, you see it sometimes. It's my case, not the case of the panel of ultrasonographists here. <laughs> okay? And the, the overall, there is an excellent negative predictive value when biochemistry is used alongside ultrasonography. Thank you for your attention and thank you for all my colleagues and students. Are there any questions? Well, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for attending and for all the speakers who gave excellent speeches this morning. Very great.